is Anarchast. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. I have a good friend and a person I greatly admire, Luke Radowski of We Are Change On. He's an independent journalist and an activist. He's been around for a long time. Uh, you can actually start to tell he's, he's growing a little older now. He's got some wrinkles and stuff. Oh, come on! <laughs> it's probably from uh, constantly uh, chasing down Henry Kissinger and then having to uh, be very aware of, of uh, people following him afterwards and things like that. Uh, Luke really gets in people's faces, and which is great, which is what journalists are supposed to do. Of course, today in the U.S. or around the world, really, uh, journalists are just newsreaders. They just read teleprompters, and uh, there is very little in in investigative journalist anymore at all. And so that's why independent media is so important. So that's why I'm really glad to have Luke on. And he's just recently announced that uh, he's going to uh, launch, or he has launched, Change Media University, which I think is really important, and I really want to promote it, and I want to let people out there know know that uh, that's forget about four years of journalism school uh, where you're going to go hundreds of thousands of dollars into debt and come out just knowing how to read a teleprompter like Barack Obama. Uh, Luke really knows the insides and outs of, of really investigative journalism. So first of all, Luke, great to see you again. Thank you. My wrinkly self is very happy <laughs> to be back on your show. <laughs> Well, you're not that wrinkly, but I can tell you, uh, yeah, 10 years it's ago, okay. you looked I'm younger. You, you, you looked younger 10 years ago. It's, it's sort of like Barack Obama. He's starting to look, uh, getting some uh, gray hairs going there, too. I don't Barack know. Barack Obama's chain smoking. He's having <laughs> ulcers. He is freaking out. And he has every right to freak out. He's on a shinking ship. I mean, like, look what you're in charge of. You're in charge of 1984, the book put in real life. You're like, and you're supposed to tell people war is peace. No. Oh, no, like we know it's not. You're supposed to defend rectal forced feeding, torture <laughs> by the CIA. I would just really stress out if I had to defend that kind of line. I mean, seriously, the guy has to say, like, okay, let's we, let's not tell the world how we <laughs> rectally fed and tortured some innocent human beings, some well, guilty human <laughs> beings, but, but some innocent human beings, and we have to stand by that position. Well, let me let me be clear. Uh, we we torture some folks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. It's just it's just utter insanity what's happening. But I've been doing this for over twelve years now. So after twelve years, of course, you're going to see some signs of wear and tear. We've been through the gauntlet many times. Whether it's the Bush administration, whether it's the Obama administration, we're always active. And as people know. I mean, when Bush was in power, we had Bill O'Reilly calling us jihad-loving liberals on Fox News. Now that Barack Obama is in power, Chris Matthews of MSNBC calls us uh, right-wing, teabagging, racist <laughs> extremists. Um, so going through all this confusion takes takes a couple years off of you. But but you know, no fear here. Um, we're you know moving vastly forward. And um, we're doing a lot of work, and it's been extremely exciting to be a part of. Yeah, you are. I've been saying all the work you're doing. You're constantly busy, constantly on the go, uh, chasing down the real stories in real places, which is amazing. So if you don't know We Are Change, you guys got to check it out. Uh, and it's not just Luke, as Luke uh, m might point out, that uh, he just started it, I think it was about 10 years ago. Is that right? Well, We Are Change has been active since 2006, but I've been active in the movement um, even before that. So since 2006, we got our baby start here in New York City, and we never even expected this thing to grow out of New York City. But at the biggest point, we had, what is it, 250 chapters all over the world of We Are Changed chapters in Japan and Australia and India, um, even in Iran. I think that one lasted for a few weeks, but, but it was there. <laughs> it was there. Um, so seeing that growth, seeing it grow from nothing in New York City was really just an amazing moment. Yeah, and it all grew organically. You really weren't planning it all. People just popped up. And I think it's really important. And we, I'd love to see a We Are Change in every city and every country on Earth. Uh, and that'd be great. And that's why it's so important that uh, people uh, can learn so much of what you've learned over the years about how to be an investigative and independent journalist. Uh, and you've just launched uh, Change Media University, uh, where you're going to have numerous courses online. Uh, to instruct people on all the things that you've learned. Oh yeah, I mean, Change Media University is a project that I've been working on for almost this entire year. It's something that is really hard to put together because there's not one answer, there's not one solution to being 
uh, free and independent journalists, especially in this day and age where trying to survive is virtually impossible and people have to work three jobs to pay off their debt that they got through college and never live their lives fully. I mean, just think about the way society is run right now. Um, as a kid growing up, you're forced to pick a career when you're too young, too unexperienced, you don't know what you're doing, you're stuck picking one way, and you're learning outdated information that's not even relevant because everything keeps changing. You go through this horrible degree, you pay all this money, you go out there in the job market, there's no job, but there's a shitty job here that you could work for, uh, but you have to be that, you have to be that slave, you have to work that corporate horrible job do what you don't want to do work nonstop. only get two paid vacation weeks an entire year you're paying off your debt you have to pay off your car loans your mortgage you have to maybe even live with your parents and then you look back at your life and you did nothing you never challenged yourself you never experienced anything you never lived your life because you kept doing what the machine told you to do so Knowing that, I said, screw this. I am never, ever, I worked a lot of crappy jobs in my life. I did uh, security guards. I did personal training. I did, uh, I was a janitor. I freaking made sales calls. I made phone sales calls. I went to door to doors. I sold uh, vacuums door to door. No joke. Like, no joke. I did everything. It was horrible. And vacuums I learned, door to door. I did, oh my God. I, I had about 12 <laughs> jobs in the span of about six months. I hated working for people. I just jumped from one thing to another because I knew that what I really wanted and like what would make me happy is not money, even though you still need money. But what would make me happy is challenging myself, the experiences, being able to travel, being able to do what I naturally want to do, being able to say whatever I want to say without worrying if I piss off a boss. So creating this path for myself, Money was never something I really, really cared about. It was never something I really gone after. But obviously, you needed to survive. Um, so I've been able to clear this path for me that has changed my life for the better. I can't tell you how much my life different, how different it is compared to selling vacuums, compared to personal <laughs> training, being a janitor, being a security guard. Um, and making all these mistakes throughout uh, the last 12 years, learning the game inside and out, learning um, what to do and what not to do, um, I was like... It's only fair if I provide this opportunity to everybody else. And that's why we created Change Media University. It's a 15 chapter course and we're adding chapters every month. I'm going to try to add new chapters every month as we grow uh, about four of them every month now. Mm -hmm. But it's from A to Z, how to get your brand, how to get your niche, how to get your website, how to optimize your website, how to use keywords, how to monetize your content, how to get a press credential, how to find events, how to cover protests, how to confront people, how to get past securities, editing videos, you name it from A to Z, if you want to get your voice heard out there, and it's not only for being an independent journalist, if you want your voice heard, if you want to be effective getting your message across, if you want to be good at looking for the truth and hunting down the truth and exposing it, this is the perfect uh, seminar for you. Yeah, and it's, it's definitely the future. And uh, people, uh, it's, I, when I first saw you launch Change Media Inter University, I was reading some of the comments, and most of the comments were, what, this is too cheap. <laughs> and I agree. I think uh, for all the things that you're offering people who want to get into this area of uh, expertise or area of work, which I think is going to be a growing industry, uh, you can just see the mainstream media is just dying. You look at all yeah. the stats. I just wrote the beautiful death of CNN recently on the Dollar Vigilante. Uh, no one watches it anymore. And if they do watch it they're mostly just laughing at it because they know it's propaganda for the most part uh, and so this is going to be the future and for I believe hundred and fifty dollars for your course if you take all the courses I think you're offering them individually as well is that right um, it's it's a complete package high okay. school students actually get the courses for free so if you're a <laughs> high school student I believe in this so much uh, and there's many reasons and and there's other people who have different comments about this but everything you learn in college right now is outdated it's not like everything online is changing so rapidly, so quickly. The AP style day book, the, the kind of py inverted pyramid writing scheme. Let me tell you where that <laughs> came from and, and why it's still being used during the Civil War in the United States <laughs> to send telegraphs to send those telegraphs. It, it had to cost a lot of money. So newspapers used to cram everything that they could in the very first sentence, in the very first paragraph, because it cost a lot of money to send telegraphs uh, to send um, you know, signals uh, what the news was all over the United States. So they invented this style called the inverted pyramid. And with this inverted pyramid, they put all the news in front. It's outdated. It doesn't, it's not relevant to what's really uh, what people want, what people are interested in. Um, and we're still using it. Everything's still back from history and history. It doesn't work anymore. But it, but if you 
know the changing media landscape, if you could advance, if you could adapt towards it, nothing is impossible, and you could really effectively get your message across. I mean, we, you know, just a simple small media organization, there's no leaders in We Are Change. There's no organizers. There's nothing. Like, if people want to start a chapter, do their own thing, they're more than welcome to. But just with us, 250 chapters all over the world. I mean, we made it to almost every single media publication you could think of, whether it's Fox, MSNB, MSNB, bull crap N, <laughs> uh, crap news network, CNN, uh, Rolling Stones, Drudge, Huffington Post, front page of Reddit. Like, you name it. Every major media publication, we were on the top. Um, once um, throughout our throughout we are changes career, um, so the potential of getting your voice heard and being effective is very important. Um, now another thing people are telling me is like, Luke, why would you want competition? Why would you want other journalists who are uh, going to be out there in this field who are going to take away business from you? Um, so that's another question I get asked a lot, and to me, it's not about a business thing because I know together as a movement when we're in this kind of new kind of dichotomy where people are understanding the true power they have themselves to tell the world the truth. When we're seeing this world come up, um, it's really a fight or flight. It's a do or die situation. We are at a time and point where the internet is still free. One person, one soul, one human being could get their voice heard throughout the world with a matter of seconds. They still haven't taken that power away from us. But speaking truth to power is incredibly important if you know exactly what's happening in the U.S. government system. If we all don't take this power and, and use it to the fullest potential, if we all don't take advantage of this situation, there, not may be, there might not be another situation in the future. Um, so to me, this is an urgent cause. I want more investigative journalists out there. I want more reporters out there. And also with this course, you also get a chance to uh, submit some of your work and get critiques on some of your work, something that other uh, institutions don't offer at all. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And he brought up a great point about going to school and how outdated it is. I also started uh, when I was 18. I went to a community college because my mom forced me to. She thought I had to go to school to learn something, uh, you know, college or university, nothing like uh, Change Media University, which is actually valuable and only takes a few days and only costs a little bit of money and even free for high school uh, kids. That's amazing. Uh, so I, I decided to go to Mass Media 101 was the name of the, the class I was in in a mass media course course in 1989 and they were teaching me they just had these these Macs and for our younger viewers they probably don't even know what they look like they had those little tiny green screens or gray screens and the teachers didn't even know how to use them but they were trying to teach us these things like how to write a press release with like the hashtag at the end and all that and I said this is ridiculous uh, you don't you guys even know that no one uses this stuff anymore it's all computerized and uh, they kicked me out of the course within one month because I was telling them they didn't know what they were doing <clears throat> and then about a year exactly to the day in 1999 I was running a media company worth 240 million dollars so it just goes to show that a lot of this stuff, especially uh, media, is changing so fast that to go to a four-year college course is a complete waste of time. You're going to learn things that don't even get used anymore. Uh, and uh, so as well, we're going to be having something at an Arcapulco right here on the beach uh, behind me in uh, February 27th to March 1st. Uh, on February 26th, you're going to be actually doing a live Change Media University, which I'm really looking forward to. And I'm hoping to also be there and maybe give a, a short talk on how to start a, a media organization because I've started many in my life, including Stockhouse Media Corporation, which was worth, like I said, $240 million at the peak of the uh, internet bubble. Uh, I started the Dollar Vigilante, which has uh, turned into quite a large media organization. Uh, so we'll be talking about that. And we're also going to have Dan Dix there of Press for Truth, who's a, very similar to your style. He started up his own in, independent media company in Canada uh, that's doing very well. He's also going to be involved. So this is going to be an incredible event. Uh, we're going to have you on the beach. It's going to be actually February 26th. And it's actually, if people sign up in the next few days, we're going to increase the rates uh, very soon. I haven't announced the date yet, but it'll probably be in the next week or so. Uh, right now, it's only $95 just to sign up for seven hours with you, Dan Dix, and my myself on the beach uh, talking what everyone whatever anyone wants to talk about it's going to be a very uh, open uh, what people want to know and we'll be asking people what they want to know and talking about that and maybe you could talk a little bit more about what you plan to do here at Anarchapoco. See I'm really excited about that especially with Dan Dix. People don't know me and Dan Dix were recently arrested in Copenhagen Denmark when we questioned um, the Bilderberg group and then on Twitter free Dix was uh, trending all over the place and it was an amazing time where people from online people from the US to from Canada even from Mexico were calling 
saying free dicks, calling the embassy, the consulate, uh, the police station that we were at, and then we were released without charges because we did nothing wrong. We were asking the Bilderberg committee why, what they were doing for some transparency and for some oversight. They demanded to delete our footage. We said no. The police came, said that they were going to plant drugs on us and threw, throw us in jail. And only because of the people power were we able to leave and uh, hashtag free dicks. So I'm excited with Dan Dix uh, being a part of this as well. He's a great guy. He's been doing this for a while. He's definitely a very professional media um, cinematographer. He does amazing documentaries as well. But uh, what I'm really happy about is being able to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. If I'm able to see you, if I'm able to talk to you, I could work out all your kinks. You could interact with me as I'm teaching you from A to Z how to do everything. And I could think of really exciting um, training drills that we could do, that we could put into action. Um, I don't know how many people you have, Jeff, down there, but if you have some volunteers, I want to create like a football running course uh, where different faces <laughs> will come up. You'll have to dodge security uh, <laughs> diplomatically, of course. Uh, I want to create a whole football training course where we actually not just sit there in a boring classroom and listen to Luke talk about how to do this. And this. No, there's things that I can't show you. There's things that I can't change and I can't work with you on personally unless I'm with you face to face. You could get the videos. The videos are great. But learning, having that opportunity one on one, um, it's going to be one, really fun. Two, all the little personal things that uh, could be customized for you will be customized for you. And again, there's so many different avenues. There's so many different paths that you could go on. Um, I've learned what works and I learned what doesn't work. So that option's open. Um, and of course, it's going to translate a little bit better than video. video. The videos, the chapters, they're still great. Um, on Change Media University, but that, again, one-on-one -on -one is something that you can't really get anywhere else. I've been trying to do this in New York City. People don't know this. Um, my audience doesn't even know this. For, for Change Media University, we launched an Indiegogo campaign, and we tried to raise $100,000 so we could actually do this in New York City, so we could actually bring students in, bring high school students in, bring anybody, have a community center, and teach people one-on-one -on -one how to do this. Um, uh, we didn't promote the Indiegogo well <laughs> at all. I went to Europe and I got arrested and I was traveling and I lost sight of what I was supposed to do and we only got a thousand dollars out of a hundred uh, fifty thousand dollars that we were asking for. But now this opportunity, um, we were able to still, you know, I spent 500 on graphics, 700 on a video editor, but everything else I was able to put together this whole full program. Uh, it took a lot longer than it should have only because I had very limited funds to make it happen, and I wanted to make it happen perfectly and professionally, and it's finally done, and it's finally up there, and it's called Change Media University. But now, finally, we're going to have an opportunity to be with you one-on-one -on -one and work together and do some really fun things and make your first video. You will make your first video. Uh, you will have everything set up and ready to go when we meet in Mexico. Yeah, and I'll be one of the people sitting in the class uh, because um, one of the things that I've been very bad at is is audio and video sort of things. It took me years to get a, a half decent camera going to actually learn how to focus it, uh, to learn you what kind of equipment. You had a 7K video <laughs> camera, and I'm like, what are you doing? I, I, I'm not very good at this stuff. I'm holding my microphone right now because I couldn't put my mic stand together uh, in the last hour or so because I got a new microphone. Because my last microphone, as I didn't know, was for recording like concert hall music and it picks up sounds so you're hearing like dogs from down the street uh, <laughs> so actually uh, angel clark uh, i don't know if you know them angel clark hosts a radio show and she just moved down to acapulco and her uh, significant other famous dave bought me for my birthday a couple of weeks ago this microphone i'm using a sure sm 58, uh, which isn't actually all that expensive. But it's a lot cheaper than the one I had, but it's way better for what I needed. I didn't even know that. I don't even know what kind of mic stands I need. These are just basic things. So I'm going to be very interested to to uh, learn from you and Dan Dix on, on all these sort of things. And maybe I can trade you my 7K camera if you like it no. so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not necessary with technology the way it is now and televisions the way they are now. Unless you're doing uh, full-on movies and movie theaters, then you need a 7 camera but another thing with change media university we actually laid out three different platforms three possible um, equipment sets that you could buy one of them is from 80 to 280 dollars and that that one's called the chris matthews going for broke <laughs> equipment set we have another mid-level which is about 700 to 900 which is the rand paul conundrum it's not great it's not bad it's somewhere in the middle and then we have the ready for rockefeller kit which is about <laughs> two thousand something dollars to three thousand dollars all the numbers are in change media university but then if you go inside that university you will have an option to buy an equipment kit that works for you uh, with your budget <laughs> 
but also what your needs specializing in what you need to do. So we also broke down that very important part because again, doing a little research, okay, what mic do I use? What camera do I use? How do I, you know, do this professionally? How do, what, what, there's so many things to figure out. We figured it out for you. It's all there already for you. There, you know, this is just a whole uh, shortcut kind of uh, curriculum that you will learn everything you need to learn. Yeah, I wish this existed a few years ago because I didn't know. And it's so hard uh, to just go on the Internet and just try to figure it out. There's so many different little things. And if you don't know someone who's doing the kind of things that you want to do, uh, you've learned through. I'm sure you've gone through dozens of cameras and mics and stuff, right? figuring out exactly what's best. And so I just threw tons of money. I, I, like, I, like I said, I have this black magic cinematography camera, which is ridiculous for what I need. But someone told me to buy it and I bought it. Um, and uh, I, I, so I'm very interested to hear about this uh these packages may i'll get the full uh, what's it called running after rockefeller the ready for rockefeller <laughs> the ready for rockefeller equipment it'd kit. still be way cheaper what i've spent so far so and it'd be so much better i've just got all the wrong equipment i'm slowly learning this and so that's why a thing like change media university could be so valuable to people if they want to get into this and of course this is the future youtube videos and and doing uh, live streaming which i'm sure you, you can talk about as well which is going to be the next real wave of uh, of the reporting yeah it's still live streaming hasn't picked up as much as um youtube has it's still not on the same level but with uh, the future advancing as it is right now with technology um it is going to be very comprehensible it's going to be very equal um to youtube uh but it, it's all so changing but right now uh youtube is the main platform we do live streaming Whenever we can, we just got new equipment to live stream as well, and that's you know it's very important. You got you have to get the equipment. You have to make the mistakes. I returned a lot of equipment. Some of it was broken by police, but then I got <laughs> other equipment that I learned how to use. Um, so so learning these aspects, learning how to effectively be ready to in one click of a button to have something live, ready, recorded, uh, where the police, even if they do take your camera, even if they do take your cell phone and destroy it there will still be a record of it online. That's, the, that's the, also the one thing that also saved me um, in Switzerland. There's two ways you could do a live stream or you could do an automatic backup with your phone. Uh, whenever uh, the cop said he's charging me with drugs and tried to stop me from filming, I clicked the one button and automatically it's up to the cloud. He could have, he deleted some of my video footage, but once he, once I told him, like, dude, it's in the cloud. You're not gonna be able to get me and frame me for drugs. Sorry, it's not gonna happen. Um, once he did that, he stopped deleting my video footage. Um, and then even if they do delete your footage, we have ways where we could get that back from you. And we have those resources available on We Are Change as well. How, if police delete your footage, you can get it back. Um, all those resources are available. Um, some of them are even free online uh, that we released. Um, we're going to create a playlist of just the free videos we did from How To. But the complete package is up on there. Um, and um, live streaming, yes, it's an extremely good safety net for your own security no matter what you're doing even if you think you're totally innocent you never know when that one time that one traffic stop that one random checkpoint that you're going to be stuck at that some crooked cop may try to set you up for something that you're not guilty of at all and again this is not even just for young people who want to be journalists this is also for uh this class could also be used for uh you know ethical businesses who are doing something good that other horrible businesses are not doing if you want to go expose that horrible business that's doing unethical things you now have ways to do that. You now have the tools and the ability to get to those people. Um, if you want to promote something that you're doing that helps other people, this is the perfect uh, kind of class for you because it also deals with that situation as well. Young, old, it doesn't matter. Uh, whatever you are, it's never too late to take charge of your life, of your destiny, and start living your life as if it was a dream. Absolutely. And uh, maybe we should have a, a short course at the Change Media University here in Arcapulco on staying out of jail. And if you go to jail, how to get out of jail, because uh, I've been in jail. I've been arrested many times, actually, in the U.S., and I figured out ways to get out of it. So I, I escaped from jail twice in one night in St. Kitts once. Uh, so, and I know and you join me in Miami a couple <laughs> oh, hours right. afterwards, <laughs> yeah. still feeling the pain from that those couple nights. Yeah. And I know you've been beat up and arrested, not to, not to 
you scare anyone who wants to get into independent media. Not many people push the limit like you do, uh, but that can happen. So to, to have the experience, and this is another reason why I think coming to a place like Anarchapoco and actually meeting people like yourself and Dan Dix is so important because if you do really get into more independent media sort of things and you really push the envelope, and let's say you do end up in uh, jail at uh, wherever you guys were in, in Europe, um, you will actually know people like Luke and, and Dan personally. So when you email and you go, hey, I, I'm, I was just trying to expose uh, Henry Kissinger or, or George Bush or any of these uh, war criminals, uh, you can just sort of send a message and, and Luke will be like, oh yeah, I remember you from the beach. Yeah, let's put out a, a thing and try to get you out of jail, things like that. So it's good to have a network as well. Yeah, we teach really great fetal positions on how to hide <laughs> when you're getting beat. No, no, no. Seriously, in all seriousness, um, if you do put yourself in dangerous positions and you did nothing wrong, uh, I will obviously try to help you out as much as you can. Another thing, any student of Change Media University will be put on a network where we're all able to share each other's work, share each other's homework, because there is homework in this university. You, you're not going to just listen to the videos and everything's going to happen. No, you have homework, specific things you have to do uh, to become uh, a, a journalist. Uh, but you, you will have tasks that you have to do. And of course, there's, if something bad happens to you and you did nothing wrong, we, we can allow our networks to help you out, whether it's finding lawyers. But then also we have other tips. I remember I was in jail sometimes and the police took everything away from me and sent me to another jail with nothing on me, no phone numbers, nothing. Um, and I wasn't able to remember friends' phone numbers and I was screwed and it was raining and it was cold and I had no other options. Uh, but one thing I started doing now is even on the bottom of my shoes, I take out the lace and I write down phone numbers. So I always have phone numbers on the bottom of my shoelaces, not the, not the shoelaces, but the bottom of the shoe sole. Uh, so I'm always ready to have contact information. There's also other little tips and tricks that I probably shouldn't share publicly out there to everybody, but, but there's a lot of them. Um, there's yeah. a lot of little things that you could do that could really change a really horrible situation into something that could really help you out in the long run. Yeah, there's a lot of tips and tricks that not only Luke can tell you, but I can tell you about many things. And so that's why I think uh, for many people, if you're interested in, at all in, in getting into this space, which you should be if you have any sort of interest in this space, uh, this is the future by far, uh, then uh, you should definitely come down to Narcopoco and uh, and learn from the people. Uh, these are the, the top people. I can't think of any independent media people bigger than uh, Luke Radowski and Dan Dix. I'm sure you might know of a few, Luke, but I can't think of uh, too many other than yourselves. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who are finally making a name for themselves, who are out there in different cities and different counties. Now, if we could organize it, if we could all hone on our skills, we could get rid of the mainstream media. Um, that's the plan. Make the mainstream media irrelevant by doing their job better. If we could do that, imagine the kind of world we would be living in if we would know everything that's happening, if there was no propaganda, if there was no lies. And this is why I chose media. This is why I chose to be a journalist, because the journalist... The mainstream media, they have all the power. They can make the innocent look guilty and the guilty look innocent. And they have throughout numbers of years. They're the ones who are responsible for the war in Iraq, the war in Afghanistan. Without their propaganda, without them being a checks and balances, which they should have been, we would have never been in this mess like we are now with proper investigative journalism, with stepping our game up, with saying, you know what, instead of having a uh, shaky uh, cruddy picture from this thing. This No, we're going to take this professionally. We're going to organize. We're going to link up. We're going to all have our independent media outlets and we're going to come together, organize, communicate with each other. And we're going to shame the mainstream media, not only to, into covering what they should be covering, but we're going to shame them so bad that they're not going to have a job anymore because they're not going to have any opportunities to tell the news because the whole audience left and they left for the truth. They left for something that can't be bought out. And it's, an, and it's that very idea that we could change the world with information, peacefully, diplomatically, in a non-aggressive way. And it's virtually possible. It could happen tomorrow. It Absolutely. Can happen with you. Absolutely. It can. Uh, I'd love to see Pierce Morgan sort of working as a vacuum sales cleaner going door to door <laughs> or a janitor in the next few years, which is what he deserves. Have you been listening to what he's been saying lately? No, I uh, Yeah, I, I just come, I don't look for it, but it just comes up on my screens. People always send me stuff. And so, of course, he was trying to do the take away everyone's guns. He's not even from the U.S., he's from the U U.K. And uh, he started with taking away everyone's guns. And now, what's he saying? He wants. Uh, 
I, I, I don't even want to say it because it's so ridiculous, but yeah, the, that's the mainstream media and they're going away. And uh, that's one great uh, point you brought up, Luke, is that if we have enough of these really good independent journalists around the world and they're putting out good stuff because that's also important, you brought that up, is you have to do good quality stuff because if people see some crappy video like this one where I'm holding my microphone because I don't even have a microphone <laughs> stand and, and uh, you know, I'm out of focus or, uh, you know, I'm not lit properly, uh, they don't uh, really respect it as much as if they see a really good quality stuff. Uh, it's just something that people are, are just used to because they see on their big flat screen TVs all this mainstream media stuff and so they assume this must be the real information because it's so well produced and, yeah. and the, the audio is always perfect, the video is always perfect. So it's really important to do uh, really good stuff and as you pointed out earlier, it doesn't cost a lot to do. Yeah, but the content on mainstream media is utter corn-filled <laughs> crap. Uh, it is the worst of the worst. I mean, the media ultimately has the power to do anything. They're the ones framing the issues that are happening, whether it's um, I can't breathe or the Eric Garner situations. They are the ones who are putting the scumbag Al Sharpton there and the warmonger Rudy Giuliani. That's the debate that we have to hear. We, we don't get to hear from the actual people, from all these different issues that are interwoven in this. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's Al Sharpton, race beating, <laughs> and Giuliani fear mongering. You no, know, no, no. But with the power that we have, you know, they have that professional makeup and the looks and the lights and all that. If we could get people out there in the streets active, ready to not only look for stories, but get them and get them in a professional manner where the audio is clear, the video is good, um, that's a game changer. That is an absolute game changer. There's no reason people should be listening to the crap on TV, and less and less people are. The advertising, especially for TV, has been going down. What has been going up, and I talked this, and I learned about this recently, this is going to be actually another topic that we're releasing on Change Media University in just a few days, about how localized news, how small niche mom and pop uh, newspapers and local media organizations are actually going up. Uh, their value, their worth is going up. Uh, but mainstream media organizations who were bought up by hedge funds who are being gutted from the inside, their investigative journalism departments totally destroyed because the hedge fund is trying to make more money. Uh, those are the ones who are going to be non-existent soon uh, because of internal pressure and of external pressure. So we go into depth about the changing media landscape. There's a reason people like Ben Swan, who was working for Fox for, uh, uh, for what, over 10 years? Um, I don't know for sure, but Ben Swan worked for Fox News for an established media organization. And he said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to YouTube. I'm doing my own thing. And he seems so, to be doing so very well as well. He's a past Anarchast guest. Of course, we met up with him in Chile. Uh, yeah, yep. and he's doing amazing work. So that's just one example um, of a person who's out there and really rocking it. And we need a, yeah. a bunch more like it. And he's, also he's just, just doing his independent thing. Yeah, and now he's contracting for RT as well. But there's other people. Um, you see the, you know, you see Larry King going from, <laughs> you know, CNN all the way to RT now as well. I hear You're Ron Paul his, might go on RT now. It's, it's very possible. Um, so you see this kind of changing dynamic that, that's happening um, that really, like, you, if you know where to go, if you know the avenue that you, you could walk down, and if you work smart, you don't have to work hard. But if you work efficiently and if you work intelligently, the road is paved for you. It's there. It's all about you just finding it and deciding, you know what, I'm going to go down this road. Instead of working a crappy, horrible job that's going to make me a slave and look back at my life and feel miserable because I never lived my dream and I never did what I truly wanted to do and I had no ounce of freedom. You decide what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. And for the first time this year in the U.S., uh, mainstream media, or sorry, the Internet surpassed mainstream media as a source of where people get news. And so the more that people can be putting out good content, and, and I'm sure fairly soon, I wouldn't mind being a part of it if it happens, is some sort of Internet-based network uh, that is 24 hours a day with live reports, real professional anchors. Uh, the uh, Internet is fast enough now to do that in full HD. I know that from watching Netflix down here in Mexico that uh, it's just as good as watching regular television now and so there's going to be nothing but opportunity and just the fact that people high school kids can find out about a lot of this stuff for free is amazing Luke thank you very much for your service as always and that other people who are out of high school or never went to high school hopefully uh, that uh, can can get this sort of information for $150 or they can even come down here uh, and for $95 right now for the next couple of days uh, be actually spend a day with you and Dan Dix is amazing and I think we're gonna look back upon this as uh, all 
all the sort of people that you spawn from this, uh, from your efforts is going to be amazing. And I think we'll look back in a few years and, and really just sort of laugh at how small it was at this moment in time compared to how big it's going to be in the next few years. It's definitely changing and it's definitely going in the projection of small localized media, small localized news, small independent mom and pop shops that are going to change uh, the environment, that are actually going to have the power to tell the world the truth because they don't, they don't, they're not accountable to any corporation or selling ads because they're able to actually do something that's totally independent of it, still make a living, still kick some butt, but also be able to work towards truth be unbiased and be able to just to be a mirror like hey, this is happening it's so important and it's something that we've been deprived of it's something that uh, sadly media has been very politicized um, and that you know that happens for many reasons I was just looking into how uh, you know the media here when uh, Rupert Murdoch took over Fox how he changed Fox this ultra right-wing kind of news organizations which automatically uh, made MSNBC go far to the left, made CNN go a little bit to the left, but how it polarized and how everyone has an issue and how, sadly, uh, whenever you take a side on an issue, whenever you just say, this guy is horrible, he's racist, he's wrong, instead of saying, hey, let's look into this, this is what he said, this is what... the more biased you are, the more kind of attention you get by the mainstream media, the more outlandish you are, the more attention you're getting. Um, and I feel like there's also an element of that on the internet as well. Whenever someone says something stupid on an issue, they always get a lot more attention. But I think um, the main reason that happens is because there's not enough good stuff out there. There's not enough stuff to say, okay, let's honestly do this professionally and let's look at this, this, and this, and this. You make up your mind because we value your opinion. We value you as a human being, and we're not going to tell you what to believe in. We're not going to tell you there's WMDs in Iraq. We're not going to tell you the air is safe to breathe on 9-11. You know, there's so many just outright horrible decisions that have been made by the media that really dictate our daily lives. Um, and that information, controlling that power, you know, power of, of controlling information is the biggest power you could have. If we could decentralize it, if we could share it, if we could provide it ethically, and if we could allow other people to rise up and be able to provide that, that's going to be something amazing. That's a game changer. Um, and that's, you know, what you were talking about before, that's what we want to do. We want to build a community, a network of independent journalists with no leader, with no central authority, with no one saying this is good, this is bad, but having the people who watch the videos actually decide, you know, what gets to the top with their upvotes. Um, not like Reddit, which is censored now and, and changed stories. I don't know if you heard this, but Reddit took down the, the, a, a report about the CIA on the front page recently. Um, and um, a great article that was written about how the CIA was torturing people, they took that down and replaced it with an old post from three years ago about how Russia uh, raped two million people in Germany during World War II. You know, so you're, you're seeing all this manipulation. Um, you're seeing Operation Mockingbird being played out right in front of you on TV. But the only thing you could do, you could sit there in front of the TV, be mad, or you could beat them at their own game and be better than they are and replace them. It's up to you. But we have that power right now that we may not have in a few years. Yeah, that's true. They, they're looking at all kinds of ways to sort of turn off the Internet or to censor the Internet. So this is the time. This is the time to do it. Absolutely. Uh, Luke's led the way and many others have led the way as well. And let's take it up a notch. Uh, the one thing I've learned about uh, YouTube and, and radio and all that sort of thing is that people have AD&D or sorry, ADD. And so therefore, I try to keep these a little shorter, although I could talk to you forever, Luke. But let's talk more on the beach in Acapulco. Uh, this coming Fe February 27th to March 1st with your course on February 26th. Uh, why don't you let people know where they can get the online Change Media University course? Well, if you go to wearechange.org forward slash Change Media University or just go to wearechange.org and the banner ad will be right underneath all the front headlines that we have there. That's great. And uh, for Anarchapoco, I know it's really hard to uh, spell or even pronounce. I didn't even think about that, but it's too late now uh, for people listening on the radio worldwide through the uh, Liberty uh, Network, through Ian Freeman's uh, uh, network. That's actually worldwide. We're going worldwide over satellite right now. It's just A-N-A-R-C-H-A-P-U-L-C-O.com. Uh, I didn't think about that when I came up with it. <laughs> not easy to pronounce, not easy to spell, but if you 
you just get even close on Google, you'll find it. And uh, you can check it out. So Luke's uh, one day seminar with Dan Dix. We haven't even announced that yet. We just talked to Dan an hour ago and just confirmed that he's going to be coming down. Uh, that'll be on February 26th. And it's a seven hour course. It's uh, if you sign up right now in the next few days, it's uh, $95. Just sign up for that course. If you miss that boat, uh, you still have uh, uh, you're still able to sign up. It'll be $145 for the course. Uh, and then the, you can also register for the Anarchapoco conference, which is going to be three days with all sorts of amazing people, including Cody Wilson, Luke Radowski, of course, uh, the, the Libertarian Party of Canada leader, Tim Moan. Uh, we're going to have uh, Dana Martin of Unschool. It's going to be an amazing event. So I hope everyone comes down or not everyone. There's too, that'd be too many. But I hope a lot of people come down and, and really take advantage of this opportunity. It's going to be an amazing event. So I'd like to thank uh, the great Luke Radowski for coming on with us. And this has been Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. Peace, love, and anarchy. This is Anarchast. Thank you.